welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee, and today we've got another little project I hope you find interesting. Uh, this is a project, uh, like so many of the things that I do, is not original to me. Uh, I got the idea from this from Matthew Look, uh, Look Creations, uh, his channel up here, card to his channel. But uh, he did a video a while back on uh, uh, cutting tapers, and in that video, he hit the highlights of making an attachment to go in the tailstock of his lathe. And it, I really like that. Uh, uh, let me turn the camera around, and I'm going to show you what we're going to work on today. Of course, you know, cutting tapers on a lathe is uh, not really an issue as long as you've got enough travel on your uh, compound. My compound has a little less than three inches of travel, which is not enough to make an MT3. Uh, this, the length of this taper is greater than the, uh, uh, the travel of my compound. And I realize you can move the cross slide a little bit and, uh, and finish it out, but it's kind of difficult to match that up. So what we're going to look at today is a means of offsetting the tailstock. The tailstock on my lathe can be offset. Uh, it's got the adjustments on it, even got a uh, uh, index on the, on the back of the tailstock. But frankly, it's, uh, it's good right now. It, it actually came from the factory good. I didn't have to adjust at all. In about 18 inches, it's uh, got less than a thousandth taper. And I honestly just don't want to adjust that, change that, unless I absolutely have to. So we're going to use, for this project, we're going to use this dovetail block that I made in the previous video, probably the, uh, the video prior to this one. But as you recall, this can slide in and out as such and got lockdowns. What we're going to do is come back here on the on the female side of it. I'm going to take an existing uh, MT3 that I've got. I've got several of these, and uh, I only got two places in all my equipment that I could put them, and I've got three of them. So I'm going to sacrifice one to make a tool to, to make these. But I'm going to grind the point off here, and then turn this down. To about a half inch, uh, just according to how hard this stuff is. We'll see what kind of luck I have with the lathe. But on the back of this, I'm going to uh, drill and ream a matching hole. This will not be a press fit. It needs to be a fit that can be adjusted. There'll be one more hole drilled in the bottom of this and a uh, thumb screw put in there as a lockdown screw. But that will go in there and then have that to be able to level it, to get it level, so that your travel is on the same plane as your uh, lathe weighs. Then on this side, I'm going to take this piece of 4140, uh, make a pointer, heat treat it, and it will be mounted in the front, right dead in the center. Uh, this is just a piece I use on the mill to line up stuff, but to give you the idea, it is set down in there. Then, this will be rigid in the tailstock, and that will be able to slide to offset or to, to create an offset to allow us to turn a taper for whatever length we need, uh, because it will not be using the compound, it'll be using the uh, uh, cross slide. So I'm going to get this set up on the mill over there to drill this hole out in the back. All right, I've got the large part of our dovetail block, the, the female side, got it mounted in the mill vise now, and I've located the center on it. So we're going we're gonna to drill a through hole, uh, half inch, we're going to drill it with a uh, 3164 to begin with, and then ream it out to a half inch. 
reason I'm drilling all the way through, there's absolutely nothing to be gained by dealing with a blind hole here. So we're going to go all the way through, then we'll just hone out that inside in there if it creates any kind of burr, which I'm sure it will. So there we got a nice half inch hole drilled and reamed. I think probably what I do before I uh, move on to the uh, uh, MT3 that we're going to cut down the, the fit in this. Well, one other thing, I need to turn this up on the side to, uh, to drill for the uh, uh, thumb screw that'll be the locking thumb screw on the bottom. But I'm probably also going to flip this over and just run a mill across this just a little bit. Remember on the dovetail, we're interested in riding on these surfaces, not the center surface. So I'll just run a, a mill across there to remove that, uh, uh, that bird that's in there. So I'm going to get set up now to drill and tap for the uh, set screw on the back side. For the lock and thumb screw, I'm going to use a quarter, tw quarter 20 thumb screw. Uh, I've got it set up, mindful that I'm drilling into what's going to be the bottom side of it. Uh, uh, yes, that'll be a little harder to get to, but I think you'll see later of why this thumb screw needs to be, lock screw needs to be under the bottom and not the top. I've located the center uh, on the x-axis. And for the y-axis, we're going to center on the short part of the female dovetail, uh, which in my case happened to be 0.445 from the edge. may need to run the bottom tap in that as deep as that had to go just to be sure I got threads all the way. All right, I'm going to do a little deburring on this piece. Then we'll be over, go over to the lathe and start working on the uh, MT3 that we're going to cut down to go in this piece. All right, we're getting ready to try turning this uh, MT3 down. Uh, turn this end down here to a half and, of course, just uh, face off this point here. So how do you hold an MT3 to mill off or to face off, turn off the only flat surface that's on it? Well, my lathe has got a uh, MT5 in the spindle, into MT5 bore in the spindle. So we, and it goes, uh, this adapter goes from a 5 down to a 3. And now with my, see if I can back this out just a little bit. With my compound turned it uh, in line with the z-axis on here to get the most reach and it pulled out as far as it'll go or or screwed in as far as it'll go I can just reach where I need to be there so I'm going to see how this turns uh, I'm going to start to begin with just working this uh, uh, point off down here and like I say I don't know how this will turn how hard this is may have to do something different. Let's see. My locking ring there wants to rattle. <clears throat> Let me find me a little clamp bolt just to put in there. All right, that's a little butter now. Doesn't 
doesn't rattle. Maybe it won't throw it off balance too much. I don't think it will. So let's pull this in a little bit now. So we can go ahead and lock our carriage down. All right. That's some pretty hard stuff right there. I think what I'm going to do is carry this over to the grinder and knock this point off. I believe I can face it okay. Well, I'm sorry, I believe I can turn it all right. But uh, trying to knock that point off right there. I'm going to take it down on the grinder a little bit, and then we'll come back and see, see how the uh, turning tool does. Okay, I've got the point knocked off now. Got a, about a 3 8 flat on there. So I'm going to just use the turning tool, facing tool, and keep working this down a little bit at a time. All right, I'll bring you back when I'm ready to start uh, turning this down to dimension. All right, I've got it faced down to length now, and it's a very hard material, so what I've done is Put me a fresh point out here on my insert, and I'm going to start turning this down to dimension. I've got my stop set down here for the depth, for the length. And I think I'm just going to cut about 20 thousandths at a time. All right, I'll bring you back when I get a whole lot closer. I'm going to set a dimension on here now. What we want to do is bring that down to match this hole that we just bored and reamed over there. As I say, I want this to be a, a good fit. It's not a press fit. I want it so I can uh, twist it just a little to adjust the level on it. But I want it, want it to be a good, nice, snug fit. So I'll bring you back when we get a little closer. All right, I've got it down now. That's micrometer says we got three more thousandths to go. So I'm just gonna that is ever so close right there. So I'm just gonna try to move just a smidgen there. All right, I'm gonna try some emery cloth on that now. Not quite there yet. I'm going to keep working on this a little bit and I'll bring you back when I got a good fit on there. All right, it's almost going on now. As a matter of fact, it's going on to within about 200 thousandths up here at the end. Uh, if you hear big noise in the background, my man's out there cutting my grass right now and uh, he's coming right up next to the tin born. But I've torn my piece of uh, emery cloth down to about a quarter inch wide just so that I can get up here without affecting the end that, that seems to be fine. Just cleaning that up right here. It's not quite there yet. All right, that's up there good now. So what this will get is a little stainless steel ball dropped in there and the thumb screw on that side. So now we're going to get set up to uh, to start our uh, pointer that will go in the uh, in the male piece of our dovetail. Okay, I've got the camera turned around now to the tail stock. I've got our um, dovetail block Mounted on the uh, MT3 that we just turned down. Got the uh, lock and thumb screw uh, under the bottom. Now what I've done, you probably won't be able to, to see it, but I've put a tiny little notch, use my Dremel tool, and put a tiny little notch in the top of that as an index mark. And also did the same thing on this MT3. That way, every time I get ready to put this in, I've got something to index it with. 
And I'll show you in, uh, with that picture of what I've got there. Now, hopefully you got an idea of what's happening now. Once this is leveled, and we'll get to that in just a moment, remember there's going to be a pointer out here on this side. We'll be turning between centers. And if I want to taper, all I need to do is, of course, with the proper adjustments, move that out to offset this pointer down here. So let me get set up on showing you how we're going to level this, because we, we want this absolutely parallel with the ways on the lathe. If not, when we slide this out, we'll be coming down at an angle. We want it level there. Now we're ready to look at a method of uh, leveling this. I uh, took the quick change tool post off just so you can see what I'm doing over here. Uh, it's, it would not be in the way uh, of anything other than the camera. But I've got it setting in here now. And in my tailstock quiver, I've got just a little bit of backlash in there. So I'm going to pull it to this side of the backlash and lock it down. Now I'm going to take a bungee cord, a little short bungee cord. You can use a clamp, rubber band, whatever you've got. And I think I'm going to snap it on there. There we go. Now this is something I dreamed up laying in bed at night, so we'll, we're going to see if it works. But to take this parallel and set it, the bungee cord is just a third hand there. We're going to set a one, two, three block on here. Now if, you're, if your lathe happens to have one of those uh, uh, cross slides that's uh, uh, Art Deco, whatever you want to call it, You'll have to come up with some other method to, uh, to level, but I, I thought this would probably work in this situation. Now, that flat on there, using an adjustable parallel, and again, if you don't have a set of these, they're very inexpensive, uh, and they're an extremely versatile tool. I'm going to set that under there now. And simply keep working the two of them together until I'm completely flat on here, flat on the one, two, three block, and the uh, and the adjustable parallel. Once I'm satisfied with that, I'm gonna reach under here to my thumb screw. That's the reason I didn't put it on the top side up here. And with everything held in place, I'll just reach under here and tighten just a little more. All right. Now this should be completely level with the uh, with the ways on the lathe, or or in parallel with them. All right. The next thing we need to do is put a the hole in the mail piece of the dovetail block to hold the point that's going to be on here. And to do that, to be at, to make absolutely certain that it's in line with the center of the spindle, I'm going to put the collet chuck back in back on the lathe. And put the uh, center drill, uh, put the center drill in a collet, run the tailstock up to it, and set that mark. Then I'll, of course, carry this over to the lathe or to the mill, and put a uh, and indicate on that mark that we made and drill it. But before I do that, I've got everything pretty much lined up right here in line. I'm going to put an index mark across the two pieces. I'm going to put a pretty deep index mark on there. 
Now what that is for is after I loosen this and move back and forth, I know that will be the zero that is in line, that will put this in line with the spindle. So I'll get the chuck back on and then we'll, uh, I'll get set up where you can see that. All right, so I've got the collet chuck back on the lathe now. Got the uh, center drill, the uh, quarter inch one in the collet and in there. Now what I'm gonna do is slide the tail stock. Remember, I've got the uh, quill locked down, so I'm just gonna push it just enough to give me an indication mark over here. And then we'll go over to the, to the mill and indicate on that mark and drill, drill it. And that has given me a good enough mark that I can go over to the mill now and indicate on that. Okay, over here at the mill, I've used a wiggler and located uh, that mark we put on over on the lathe. So now we're going to do just like we did the female piece. We're going to uh, bore a hole all the way, or drill a hole all the way through. Uh, in this case, again, a half inch. Close your eyes if you don't want to see me put an end mill in a drill chuck, but this is just a quick pass just to clean up some, uh, some burrs right there. All right, now we're ready to go back over to the lathe and start on that piece of 4140 to make the pointer for this. All right, I've got this piece of 4140 uh, in the collet now, it's an inch and an eighth. We want to take it down to approximately this size right here, what this was originally, which is uh, 90 thousandths, uh, I'm sorry, 900 thousandths, 0.9. And we're going to come back an inch and three quarters, uh, turning down to full d dimension. And then we're going to take about 0.7 inches down to our hole size to fit in the uh, dovetail block. Got some tape on it now, so I'm just going to see if I can peel some of that tape off. All right, we'll get a zero there. All right, I'll lock the uh, carriage stop in place now. All right, so let's get about. 40 thousandths now. Still don't want to break that chip. Alright, I'm going to get a measurement on that, set a dimension on the DRO, and to bring it down to 0.9. I'll bring it back when we get close to the, the final cut. All right, this should be the final cut to bring that down to uh, the major diameter, if you will. All right, now let's come up <clears throat> the our mail piece. is 0.75, so we'll, we'll make this 0.7, will be plenty long enough. Zero out the DRO right there. And this we want to take down to our uh, 0.5 to make it fit. Well, actually, on this male piece, we're going to want this to be a press fit, if at all possible. 
so we want it just a little bit oversized. I've checked this with my gauge pins, and it did ream out to uh, 500 thousandths. Uh, so we want to make this maybe 5 tenths over, a thousandths over, just so it'll press in to this. Now, as always, I'll check this, set a dimension on the DRO to get us close. And I'll bring you back when we start uh, actually uh, test fitting. All right, we should be getting close now. That reads 511 thousandths, and we want 501. So we're going to try taking 10 off. All right, that should be close enough that we can uh, massage it a little bit with the sandpaper. All right, let's see where we are. All right, that says we're pretty much on the money. And actually showing a little bit small. Yep, I wanted that to be a press fit. It's a Loctite fit. All right, I'm not sure what I, what if anything I read wrong on that, but that took a little bit more than I wanted. But it's still usable. We're at about 498,000, so I got about 3,000 too much off. But again, I can lock tight that in and might even consider putting a pin in there. All right, we're going to turn this around now and put our point on. Before I turn it around to put the point on, though, I think I'll go ahead and keep it held with the, uh, with the large diameter here to part it off. That's got that parted off. I'll get it turned around and get set up to uh, cut the point. All right, I think one more pass on there ought to bring it to a good point. I'll just take it nice and slow and steady. Now we'll take the file and just clean up any little spots on there. I think I'm going to ease in there one more time. And see if I can't get just a little more point. I believe that's the sharper point as I'm going to be able to get. Oh yeah. 
All right, I'm going to take this piece out now. I'm going to preheat the oven, get it going pretty good, and drop this piece in there. I decided instead of heating up the entire oven here, which uh, probably to get it up to temperature, it would take a good hour or so. <clears throat> I'm just going to use the map gas and see if I can't get this tip up here uh, hot enough, red enough to uh, harden it. Because if I do have to drill a pin in there, I really don't care about that part being hard as well. So let's see what we can do here. All right, it's starting to get a good red now. All right, I think we got a good hard tip now, maybe. We'll let that settle for a while, then we'll start putting the pieces together. Okay, even though I got this uh, boss on the point here, just a couple thousand sunder, I'm going to go ahead and try using it for now. That's all the 4140 I've got uh, here that I can, um, that I'm confident that I can heat treat. But as you recall, I was only just a couple thousandths uh, light. So what I did was go take my center punch and just barely disturbed it in four places of each of the quadrants. And that's going to require a press now. So what I'm going to do is use a little uh, acetone here, clear, clean out the pieces good, clear, clean them up. Now we're going to go over to the press, and I'm going to use some... Uh, Permatex uh, thread lock uh, as well in there. And we're going to press that in and I'm going to let that set. Uh, then, we'll come, then we'll be ready for the final uh, piece that needs to be done on this before we can actually use it. All right, I'm over here at the press now and I've got one of my, one of my drifts on the press pin. And instead of pressing on this point that we got right here, I just went over to some scrap bin, found a piece of stock over there. This happens to be aluminum that has a 60 degree center already drilled in it. And we'll use that to press over that. But the first thing I want to do is put some thread lock on there. This is what I like about these drifts that I made right here. It, you don't have to have a third hand holding them. The magnet holds it in place. And there we have it pressed in. Of course, it was short enough so it doesn't interfere with the inside of our dovetail. So we'll go back over to the workbench and look at the last piece that we need to fabricate and mount on this to have a completed tool. All right, I believe the last piece we're going to need for this, we've got everything set up here. We've got a means of locking it in place. Uh, we've got our MT3 on the back, the way the lock kit when we get it lovely, leveled. And I, I don't think I mentioned it when I was talking about leveling, but that's something that'll need to be done every time this tool is inserted. Uh, I put the witness marks the two index marks, one on here and one on the uh, tailstock wheel, to get it close. But to get, this needs to be absolutely uh, parallel with the ways on the lathe as feasibly possible. So it needs to be leveled each time it's installed. But the one piece we got left to do uh, is some means of micro adjusting this. 
we'll be dealing in thousands here. So when we loosen this to adjust it out just a little bit, we want to be do it, be able to do it again in very small increments. I've got two old micrometers here. This is a an old Chinese one that I've had for a number of years. And this is a craftsman, old craftsman that came in a box of stuff that I bought. I almost believe that this is a steric one. It looks styled very much like steric. I realize craftsmen didn't build their own. But uh and I was willing to sacrifice <coughs> excuse me, sacrifice one of these to mount on the side of this to push, to push this in. Of course, to retract them would have to be manually. But folks, I'm stumped. If you know how to do it, I would greatly appreciate dropping me an email or posting it in the comments. But I can get the thimble off, keep running that, and it'll unscrew out and pull the pin out. But I have yet to figure out how to get the sleeve out of the frame. On this one, if it is a sterret, and I've done as much research as I thought was feasible on the internet, and the only thing I found about dismantling or disassembling uh, a micrometer, I did find one article by sterret that said the sleeve and the frame were made as one piece. And looking at that, I don't think it's one piece because I think this is cast. The frame is cast. But I just don't see how to get that out of there. Uh, same thing over here. I don't know whether it's pressed in or what. I know you can probably buy this this part without the frame, but uh, I've not had much success finding that either. If you know uh, how to get the sleeve, the thimble, the anvil, or this part totally separate of a frame, I'd appreciate that information as well. But in the meantime, uh, instead of totally destroying one of these, I even thought about taking the Dremel tool and cutting that. But if it was something in there I couldn't use, then I've wasted a reasonably good micrometer. And this one does measure in tenths. So I decided for the time being, what I'm going to do, I just made a simple uh, fine thread. This is a 3 h 24 thread. Just took a piece of threaded rod. Let me get this out. Rounded the ends. And also just simply a piece of uh, half inch by half inch stock. Just carried this over to the belt uh, belt grinder and rounded up, rounded the, the ends. But what I did on the housing, the the, uh, the dovetail block, was come over here and drill a quarter twenty hole. Now I will I will likely use some Loctite on this uh, if it looks like something that's going to stay on here for a while. If I don't get some good responses on how to get the the sleeve out of these micrometers or or get to uh, find just a sleeve and thimble. But what that will allow to do now is with it still just a little bit snug, I can make some very fine adjustments on that. So that is the plan I'm going to go with for now. And I'm going to end this video at this point. Uh, don't get upset at me for not showing you this in use, but I have never seen one of these before I saw Matthew's uh, video. I don't know whether they're made commercially or not, but I'm going to spend a little bit of time experimenting with this myself, and then once I feel comfortable with it, I'll come back in my next video, probably next week. But uh, uh, in the meantime, like I say, I'm going to end this video here and make another video where we're going to take this piece of stock right here and turn a MT3 from it and I've got a use for this extra amount out here.
Uh, we're going to actually thread that for a chuck to go on. So take care. I hope you got something out of this video, and we'll see you on the next one.